So we're going to move uh, into the word of the Lord. And as I say, it is not mine to be up here all day uh, trying to address that. Uh, in the fifth chapter of Matthew, we've been talking concerning the Beatitudes. And the reason we have been talking about the Beatitudes is that Jesus Christ himself came to this earth with the sole purpose of offering to us a better way of living and a more efficient way of practicing uh, the uh, truths of the Lord in our everyday living. Uh, he chose some disciples so that they could become the focal point of the message that he was given, for he taught them three and one half years. And then they went out and they taught others what he taught them. And the reason that it is important because when we look at life and see things as they are, it's very easy to become pessimistic about what's going on in the earth. But the truth of the matter is we have to learn how to be optimistic about what's going on in the earth. And the way we have this optimism and, 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 and cause it to continue in us is not from what somebody says from without, it's what we believe from within. Who are we, what do we possess that we can continue to control our environment? What causes us to lose our effectiveness? What causes us to lose sight on the goals and the objectives that we have? How is it that we can get up in the morning and have so much zeal and be ready to go forth and then all of a sudden we hear a word from somebody which knocks us back and causes us not to be able to go forward as we intended when we first got up. I'll tell you what it is. Any time that you uh, think less of who you are and the power that you possess, then those influences outside of you, you will always yield to the outside influences. But we've got to learn how to always allow that from within us to cause us to move forward because what people say and what conditions present themselves should never dictate what you do and neither define who you are. And so, so then, and we're talking about the beatitude because Jesus knows that he's gonna lead. And while he's here, he is the force, he is the power, he is the light, He's all of that, and, and he, but he knows he's going to leave. And so he starts talking to his disciples about things that they needed to know that would help them in his absence. But he also let them know that they need to yield, as it were, more to him and what he's saying than what they have received outside of that influence. Now, you understand, uh, uh, there were writings in the New Testament when Jesus came. And, they, they, and they, uh, the Jews referred to the Mosaic law when he came. And they had meetings in the synagogue. And they had meetings in the temple. But they were meetings without power. They were meetings that were quite uh, dogmatic. They were meetings that addressed themselves to tradition. But they were not meetings that would enhance individual lives. Rather, it would bring a, a curtailing, as it were, to their creativity, to their innovation, and certainly their spirituality. And so when Jesus came, Jesus said, you have law, I didn't come to destroy it, but through me that the law might be fulfilled. In other words, I'm gonna teach you how to live where the law does not affect you because you live above the law. That doesn't mean you disregard the law, but your lifestyle is such that the law does not have any impact upon you because you never surrender to those things that causes the law to exist anyway. Isn't that a great life that you can live that doesn't make any difference what the law says because the way you live, you're not bothered by it anyway? And so we had the scripture last week, uh, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. 
And we spoke to you concerning that, and we said that that poor spirit was, was that of humility, that one would humble themselves and bring themselves to a level of understanding that their sufficiency was not of themselves, but their sufficiency was of God. We said that you need Christ in your life, that we're talking about Christ-likeness rather than religion. You can have a religion, you can be very much responsible and do the same thing over and over again the same way, believe the same way, all right? But now just because you have religion does not mean you have salvation. Many people are religious, but they don't have salvation. And they are not Christ-like. They don't have, they don't address themselves to the morality of Christ. And so in today's time, we have to address ourselves to the morality of Christ. In other words, you have to become someone who you aren't uh -huh, when you receive Christ. If you don't have a change in who you are once you receive Christ from that which you were before you received him, you have not received the Christ that I know. There's a change. Now, you have to understand, with this change, you don't really become perfect. Now, I know we want to say we do. I know, I know that. I've been taught all my life. Praise God, as soon as you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that means you're perfect. But now, if that's true, I would like to know why do we still have this? Why do we still have teachings? Why do we still have biblical references? Why do we still have prayer meetings? Why uh, do we still have revivals? We do so because we are not sufficient. We're not adequate. We're on our way to becoming. And so Jesus says to his disciples on the mount, this is what I want you to understand. You have not arrived. And I want you to walk in that humility. But I don't want you to be afraid to be transparent. Because if you let, you, if you let yourself know that you have not made it, that's the beginning of deliverance. <laughs> We don't want people to know we have struggles. I said, we don't in the church want people to know that we have struggles. But one posture of humility is letting people know that you have struggles. If I find out that you have struggles, that's going to help me when I'm having struggles. Because most of the time when you have struggles, people want to put you outside the church. But if there's any place that you need to run into when you're having struggles, it's into the church. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in. Not the sinners run in, but the righteous run in and they are saved. Now I wanted to go there for the backdrop from what we talked about last week to where we are today in that fifth chapter in the fourth verse. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. That's what I want to talk about. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, the first thing I want to say to you, don't you go somewhere and stay all night crying. That's right. That's right. Teach, Bishop. Because that's not what the scripture's saying. If you crying all night, then that's a sign of weakness and a lack of faith. Come on. But I cried all night. I wanted God to hear me. Well, uh, you, you can cry all night. He heard you when you first opened your mouth. And he knew what you were crying about before you shed one tear. So shedding tears don't move God. Faith does. Faith moves God. Well, I'm going to cry and God's going to look at my tears and have mercy upon me. He already had mercy upon you when he went to the cross. He died on the cross for your sins, for your imperfections, 
for your poverty, for your loss. He died for your health on the cross so that today you don't have to cry. So then the mourning that we do is a mourning not because I lost my job, not because my wife walked out on me, or my husband's irresponsible. That's not the reason why. My mourning is not because I couldn't get the car that I wanted. My mourning is not because I don't have any friends. My mourning, M-O-U, my morning is because I know that I need more of God. And I'm trying to deal with this sinful nature. Are you still listening to me? I see what's going on in the world. I see what's going on in my home. And specifically, I see what's going on with me. And because I see what's going on with me, the only way that I can help somebody else, if, if I have this positive, connectional relationship with you, almighty God. And so I'm standing before you, or I'm kneeling before you, I am coming before you, and I'm saying to you, Lord, I need your help. The devil doesn't ever want you to tell God you need his help. He doesn't ever want you to tell God that you're insufficient. He wants you to walk around in a facade as though that you have it made. But I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to reach God. Things are going to get better in your life when you reach out to him and give to him the kind of attention and the asking that you need. Amen. Hurry up and get with me. I'm almost finished. So you are blessed. Watch. You are blessed when you mourn. Uh-oh. Wait, 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 wait. How are you going to be blessed at the beginning? You see, we think the blessing comes afterwards. But the blessing, blessed are they, what? That mourn. It's good to be blessed. But I don't have to wait until down the road. But blessed are they that are those who mourn. For they shall be comforted. Two points. You're blessed because you mourn or you speak to God concerning your inadequacies. I know, you've, I know you've been taught the other way. I know you've been taught. I understand you've been taught the other way and you looking at me because you've been taught the other way and you want me to subscribe to that teaching. But I cannot subscribe to that teaching because it's not your tears about your loss that moves God. And reason why it doesn't move him, because he knows that whatever you lost, he can give back to you. And so he's not moved by that. He's moved by your faith. And so when you say to him, I need you because of me, because not only do I want to do well, but I want to impact the lives of other people so that they can do well. So I am mourning. Now, other reason why I know it's not what we say, because when he was getting ready to leave this earth, he said something very good. He told his disciples, you know, I'm getting ready to go. And this is what I want you all to accept. Let not your heart be troubled. I'm going, I've been with you. I've been who you needed me to be. Helped you all along the way, but I'm getting ready to go. But I don't want you weeping. I don't want you crying. I don't want your heart to be troubled. 
If you believe in God, believe also in me. Because I'm telling you, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. So you don't need to be weeping down here. You're going to end up the same place where I am. Woo. My God. And so, and so, and so he does not want you to do that. Now the other thing you say, and uh, yeah, the other thing that you say that you need to stop, and that is you get all, and, and, and when we preachers preach it, that's when you all really get up and get ready to shout and run up here and hit me with the pocketbook or purse or whatever. <laughs> Weeping may endure for a night. But <laughs> come in the morning. Now we get carried away on that, particularly if we put a little tune to it, hoop it up a little bit. But the scripture, uh, what we're projecting, this weeping that you're doing. You're weeping, what? Over loss. And that may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Whatever happened to you at 10 o'clock p.m., if your attitude about it, if your attitude has not changed, at 6 a.m., you're going to have the same problem. So your morning has no reference to the 24-hour clock. Your morning has reference to your illumination. Uh, what? My mind is illumined by the word of God and the knowledge of God and the understanding of God. And what is that? that whatever I'm going through, however severe it may appear to be, my deliverance is already there and all I have to do is believe. I don't have to cry my way through it. Don't have to cry my way through it. Just have the faith to know that, that, that when I look into the word of God, as the word of God pertains itself to me, Everything is going to be all right. Yeah, I didn't lose my hope. I didn't lose my faith. But most of all, I never lost my praise. Yeah. That's what it's all about. And so then, so then, so then you are blessed, but also you are comforted. Uh huh. You are comforted. Why? Why am I comforted? Well, because he, that's where he wants you to be anyway. And I'm going to tell you how I feel. When I get up in the morning, I don't want to get up in the morning uh, feeling a loss. I don't want to be weary. I don't want to be down in spirit. But when I get up in the morning, I want to get up in comfort. I said, I want to get up in comfort. When I get up in the morning, I want to get up in comfort. And I want the rest of my day to be comfortable. So I have to work on it. Now I'm going to tell you, without understanding him, and without having that relationship with him, you can get up in the morning and not feel so well. Have you ever got up in the morning and sang the song of yesteryear, not church song? Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a wonderful day. I've got a wonderful feeling. Everything's going my way. Now, to those of you who were born after a certain time, you know that song. But some of you all can go back to that song. And then some of you who listen to a lot of music, you can go back to it also. But, and, then, and then you get a telephone call. And somebody says something negative. And all of a sudden, that feeling of ecstasy that you had in the morning, it, 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 it's gone. And then you, you go through the day with doldrums as to 
things that, that nothing, nothing appears to be all right. You don't even like the way the food that you really enjoy tastes. Say so this food, you eat that food all the time, some of your favorite food, but you don't like that. Driving to where you're going seems to be longer than what it used to be. Uh huh. People you like to be around, you don't want to be bothered with them now. Are you still with me? Uh huh. You know I'm telling the truth. Yeah. And don't say anything about coming to church at night. I won't be there that night. No, I'm not going that night. Not that night. I mean, and that's what happens. However, 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 if you understand that you can speak to God with your inner person and have him to preoccupy your thoughts mm -hmm, and, and permeate uh, your being to the extent that you don't feel that it's all about you, but it's all about him and that he is right there with you in the midst of your storm and whatever anybody called you and said to you that is not well at all, you will know that my God, my God has everything in control. If it's a problem with personal economy, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. Ah. If it's something that somebody is talking about you that happened years ago, you can say, well, it doesn't affect me because what God told me that he's taken my past and the activities of my past and cast them into the sea of forgetfulness to be remembered no more. Oh, somebody's going to hear what I have to say in here today. I'm trying to tell you right now without a doubt that when you learn how to invoke the presence of God in your life and let him become not just the resident, but the president of your life, things will be better. So, when I get up in the morning, my comfort does not come from outside influences. My comfort comes from within. Because God comes in with his spirit into your spirit. And when his spirit comes into your spirit, there's a transfer. Your spirit is no longer the spirit of preponderance, but his spirit is. His spirit takes control of your spirit. Who you used to be, you're no longer. You are a new creature. Yeah, you're a new creature. Born again, filled with the Holy Ghost and the power of God and the anointing of God that will take you from where you are to where you want to go. And I know I'm right. I said, I know I'm right. Woo. So, 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 if you see me down here and a tear forming in my eye, it's not because of stress nor distress. Uh uh, it's not because of perplexities. No, it's not. It's not because I'm getting ready to complain. But the tears are there because they represent joy. Why should I feel discouraged? <laughs> oh, somebody's going to hear it. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Is there anybody here who? understands that in the midst of all that you don't have to feel discouraged. All Jesus has to do is be your portion and a constant friend. And in the midst of all of it, you can sing because you're happy. 
You can sing because you're free. Well, wait a minute. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know that he watches me. How many have a God that's watching over you? So dry your eyes. Don't you cry. Stand on the truth of God and know. Somebody help me say it's all right. If there was anything in this message from which you received inspiration, stand on your feet and give God some praise. Because I'm happy. Help me. I see. I see. Because I'm free. His eyes. Amen. Listen, listen, listen to this. Sometimes God is calling us. And when, we, when he calls us, we need to listen while we still can hear. Even while our knees can bend. Because the master is calling. And today I hear him calling. I hear him calling. And I wonder in your own spirit, can you hear him calling?
If you're in the house of God today, you know in the time of which we live, these are the times of peril. If you have not given yourself to the Lord and responded to his call, right now is the time to do so. If you are not in Christ, you know you need to do that as we look at our days which are ahead of us. But in addition to that, if you've already given your heart to Christ, but for whatever reason, you may find yourself struggling in the process. I want you to know that God is here to strengthen you and cause things to be much better within your life than what they are right now. Bow while your knees still bend. Bow while your you still can hear. to join these men because God is here for us. It matters not what your age may be. You're in the house of the Lord and God wants you to know that he loves you with an everlasting love. And this, in fact, is really your day and your time. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to come. In addition to that, if you have Christ in your life, you say, Brother Maynard, I, I want to come not just because I need Christ, I already have him, but I want to come because I feel this is the church wherein I can find the word, the spirit of God, and that which will propel me to a greater life. I feel this is the church where the Lord would have me to come to. If you're in here today and you want to become a member of Cathedral of Praise, just walk out of your pew area, come down here to where I am. Let God have his way in your life, even today. Amen. Let him have his, his, his way in your life. Because the safest place in the world today is in the will of God. So when you are in God's will, there's greatness that's due you. Amen. Just come out of your pew area. Thanks for the pastor. I've been uh, absent from the church about about a year. It's been about a year since I've been here. I've stepped outside of my marriage. I'm struggling with that. I'm struggling. I've lost three jobs. I'm struggling. And, you know, I'm just struggling.
I say to you, Satan. I say, I say to you, Satan. You've had your way. You've had your way. But not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. As of this day, of this I, day commit myself I commit myself to God. To God. And God, to God, God, take control. Take control. Thank you Thank for you. forgiving me. Thank you. Thank you for coming into my heart into and my heart. living in me. Living in and by your grace, by your grace, I'll live for you. I live for and you. right now, right now. I give you thanks. I give you Come thanks. on, give God some thanks. Hallelujah.